Hi, welcome back. This is Brian Gregg, uh, returning for another screencast on uh, programming for beginners. This is part two, in which we're going to be talking about uh, some new topics. Uh, if you missed our first session, I went through the basics of the Scratch programming language and uh, how to set up a basic animation and uh, interactions using the tool. We also went over the basic layout of the, of the program itself. So if this is something that is new to you, um, you may want to go back if you haven't watched that and uh, go through that initial tutorial. If not, uh, and you are ready for some more advanced topics, uh, feel free to stay tuned. Uh, going to get started by creating a new Scratch program. Uh, this time we are going to continue with our ninja theme and this time we're going to have a little bit more interaction. I'm going to call this one ninja animate Oops. and we're going to load some sprites. So you see here we have kind of a blank canvas. I took out some of the initial sprites by uh, deleting them. We're going to upload our ninja sprite that we were using in the first game here. Uh, this time, however, we're going to start with the idle, which is just going to show our ninja standing in place. Now, what I'd like to do with the ninja on this one is I'd like to give him the effect of standing around. And normally when somebody stands around, they don't just stand in one position, not moving. Uh, they're breathing, their arms are moving. So what we're going to do is we have some additional some additional uh, costumes, as they're called in Scratch, which we can add in here for his idle position. So I'm going to add in idle 4. And as you can see, by adding in these type of uh, slightly different positions, you can actually see our character moving and uh, giving the effect of standing still, breathing, and moving his, uh, moving his muscles. Now, we wouldn't want to have to continuously uh, cycle through those animations manually uh, to give the appearance of that, uh, what we want to do is we want to actually have that repeat endlessly. We want it to switch from the first costume to the second costume, back to the first costume, back to the second costume. We did a little bit of this in the first one, but we were only repeating the animation once. This time, we want to repeat the animation over and over and over again. And there's a control for that. Uh, this is a control that's um, used extensively in every programming language, and it's called a loop. Basically, what a loop does is uh, it tells you to keep repeating a particular action over and over again uh, until some condition is met. Uh, in this case, we're not waiting for any sort of condition, so we're just going to have it loop through forever. And there is a loop in here, which is actually called forever, which will basically just say that starting from when the program begins to perform this action and never stop. Uh, we actually need to add in some kind of an event to kick this off, so we'll kick this off when the green flag is clicked. Now what the actual um, operation that we want to do is uh, is we want to change the look. And we did a little bit of this the last time where we switched the costume, we switched the costume, um, but this is, we'll switch it from idle zero to idle four, um, but what's gonna happen is, this is gonna happen so fast that we won't even be able to um, see the animation changing, so uh, in order to give it a more fluid look, we want to put a timer in there. We want to put a uh, control in here which says 
to wait in between each of these particular movements. The last time we did a fraction of a second, 0.25 seconds, which looked very nice. Let's hit our green flag. Okay, it looks like he's breathing pretty heavy there. Maybe we can tweak this a little bit. Let's see here. Looks a little better. That's, uh, it just kind of gives the impression of him, you know, breathing heavily. Maybe after he's, you know, he's a ninja. He's obviously been uh, partaking in some very serious ninja type activities. Well, that's all well and good, but we want to actually a little bit more interaction with him, and uh, way we're going to do that is we're going to. Um, Click on, we're going to set up an interaction where if you click on the ninja, he's going to run. And he's going to run for a few paces, and then he's going to stop, and he's going to catch his breath. And what we want to do is we want to add in another loop for when he's running. And we want that to happen only for a certain period of time. All right, so... What we need to do is we need to define the ninja's state. The state just means the something that's telling us what particular action he's currently engaged in. Um, we've only described two states so far, and that was running and standing. So we can do that by creating a variable. What a variable is is something within a program that can store some information that tells us about the program at that point in time. And it can change throughout the course of the program. So this variable, we're going to make a new variable. We're going to call it state. And uh, it only needs to be for this sprite. We're going to hit OK. And we are going to edit a control. I'm sorry, actually we're going to add in an event, and we're going to say when this sprite is clicked, we are going to set state to run, give it an all lowercase, clean up, and you can see up here at the top, idle 001 state equals run, because we clicked on him. So, what do we do with this now? Well, in our loop here, where our costume is changing, uh, we want to check to see if the state equals run. We can do that using another control. So we talked about loops. The other type of control that we're going to be looking at is a conditional statement or an if then statement. So let's look at our control and here we have an if then else. All right, we're going to take this out for now. I'm going to put an if then else here. The if then else is going to check for this state. It's going to say if First, we need to put in an operator, and we're going to be using the equals operator because we're going to be checking if something is equal to something else. And we're going to say if state is equal to run, then we're going to do something. Otherwise, we're just going to be standing still. And for the if condition where state equals run, we've got to add in some additional costumes here. So let's have some fun with that. I have a image of our ninja pal here running. Add in run zero zero one. That one looks pretty good. And another one of run zero zero four. Okay, there's our ninja running. Back to our scripts, and if state equals to run, 
we are going to switch his costume to run four. Actually, you know what? Why don't we just duplicate this? And then instead of saying idle zero, we'll say run zero. Instead of saying idle four, we'll say run four. All right, great. Let's get this started again. Wait a second. What's happening here? He's running, even though we haven't clicked on him. Well, take a look at our state over here. We clicked on him earlier, so the state is equal to run. That's what happens when the sprite gets clicked on. So according to this, this state is equal to run, so it's operating, it's, uh, it's, it's executing this first code block here. It never goes into the second code block here because we're never changing run back to its other state, which is stand. Now, if we wanted to set that state back, we can, after this run statement is executed, we can go back to our data and we could say change state to stand. I'm sorry, I didn't want to say change state by. I wanted to say set state to stand. And now he's the state is set to stand. Now if we click on him, he runs for one pace and then it sets the state back to stand. Click, run, stand. Now it's a little boring. Normally when you run, you run for more than one pace before you have to take a break and rest up. So we can add another loop in here. By going back to our controls, we can add a repeat until, or actually, we can add a repeat for a certain number of times, say repeat 10, and we'll take our whole statement, uh, our block of code which makes our ninja run, drop that into this first code block here, and uh, just because that normally when you're running, it's something that uh, an animation that would uh, iterate through much more quickly than somebody who's just standing breathing will actually make these a little bit of a shorter duration. Now, there we go. He runs for 10 paces and then he stops to take a breath. Click on him. He runs for 10 paces and then stops to take a breath. Pretty cool. Um, one thing that I want to do is if you notice when we click on him, the state sets back to stand even before he finishes his run. And that's because we have the set statement within the repeater here. We actually want to move this outside of that block so that it waits until after the loop is done before it sets the state back to stand. So let's click on him. While he's running, the state is run. And then when he's done, it sets state back to stand and he's standing still. So this is a basic introduction into some very important programming concepts of loops, conditional statements, and variables. Uh, stay tuned, we'll have some more uh, programs. I'll put the links to this Scratch program out on the uh, in the description of the video so that you can take a look at it yourself and uh, you know, have fun, happy programming, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.